Hey, what's up guys? It's John. Some of you guys know me as Sub-Zero Gaming. Um, it's been quite a while since I made a new video, and I can't tell you how many messages a day I get from new people and old people who watch my videos asking me, you know, when am I going to do more videos? And where we left off was basically what was next is we were supposed to do colliders. You know, if the bullet hits the enemy, it's supposed to disappear. If the enemy hits you, the player disappears. Um, unfortunately, guys, I got really caught up with a project in C++, which has been taking most of my time. And as that's coming to an end, I'm going to actually have a lot more time to do more Unity 3D tutorials because I'm actually working on a new project that involves the Unity 3D engine. So, to give you guys uh, some detail about the final tutorial that you saw before I went away for a few months, um, basically, I didn't give you any code to look at or anything like that. I basically had a drawing board and I wrote out what to do. So, in the beginning here, um, I'm going to go ahead and review that video, give you the code, so, you know, in case you have any questions or anything like that, show you how I did it. Uh, also, guys, I also lost, um, I lost the project files to my tutorial series, so mm -hmm. I'd like to thank, I'm sorry, I don't really remember his name, let me look it up though, hold on, um, basically he sent me the download package to my tutorial series that followed it exactly as I did, so it helped me out a lot, so I didn't have to, you know, redo all the content again, and I'd like to thank... Genetics. Okay, genetics it is. <laughs> Alright guys, so looking back at what we did last time, basically our object was to, if I even remember correctly, it was to make these things, the enemies, appear in different areas and come down at different speeds, which you'll see is being done here. So let's go ahead and look at that. Go and open up your laser class, or I believe I once named it projectile. And you'll see that for the laser, we didn't, we didn't touch that class file. But what we wanted to do was the enemy class file. And you'll see in here, we declared our cache of transform. All right, so we have transform my transform. That just caches the transform. We have our float in, uh, we have our min speed and our max speed. We have our ints for X, Y, and Z locations. And then we have our current speed, uh, which is set to default, because we're going to define it uh, in just a second. Uh, we're setting our Y position to 14, our Z position to 7, and then X, remember, we want the X axis, which is horizontal, to be random between two numbers. Um, and as you can see here, we use negative 14 and 14, so it's going to pick a number between negative 14 and 14. Could be 13, could be negative 12, could be 0. All right, it's going to change every time. We have the my transform uh, equals transform. Okay, we're declaring it in start. We also have the position, which is the position of X, Y, and Z. So we're making a spawn point. And then we have our current speed, which is set to default, but now we declare it here, where the current speed is going to equal a random range between min speed and max speed. Okay, so we have a random range for our, our X axis, and then we also have a random range for our current speed. All right, and the update method here, we, have, we change X every frame. So once X has been gone through or destroyed, we want to change it. So X is going to equal another random range, trans, and then we're going to translate it, um, vector up, so it's going to, you know, it's going to go up with the current speed. Um, actually, give me one second here. Trans, trans, not translate. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Okay, guys, sorry. So as you can see here, it says my transform dot translate uh, vector three dot up. Basically, it has a minus sign here because it's going inverting. So another way to do that is just to write uh, vector three dot down. It's the same thing, okay? Uh, the minus sign just makes it invert. So if it goes up, then it's going to go down. All right, and then you have here if my transform dot position is less than negative ten, then it gets a new position of x, y, and z, and the current speed is then randomized again, okay? So hopefully you guys were able to do this correctly. I'm assuming you can, seeing as there weren't too many questions on it. And now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. What we want to do here is make it to where if the enemy hits our player, the player disappears. Or if our bullet hits the enemy, the enemy disappears. So to do this, we have to work with colliders and physics and rigid bodies. 
So basically, I, I defined, I believe, briefly in one of my tutorials that a rigid body, a rigid body, just means an object has physics. So it means that it can, it can't go through something. If you have, if you have rigid body, it has mass. Okay, so ideally, we're all rigid bodies. And the way it works is we want our player, our laser, and our enemy all to have rigid bodies because we want them to interact with each other. So when the laser hits an enemy, that's a rigid body. It's going to destroy it. And vice versa with the enemy and hitting the, uh, the laser or the enemy hitting the player. So what we need to do is, first things first, we need to make sure our components have a rigid body. Okay, so in the enemy... In the enemies, uh, in your enemy in the hierarchy, make sure it has a sphere collider, or whichever shape you use. Make sure its trigger is checked. Then you want to add a rigid body to it, and then don't touch any of the uh, don't touch any of the things. However, do make it uh, kinematic, okay? And for if you guys don't know what that means, um, basically it says that we're gonna use um, we're using the built-in physics system, okay? We're not going to define our own physics. We're going to use their physics. All right, so don't touch any of this. Make sure kinematic is checked. Add a rigid body. Make sure the sphere collider. Uh, go to your player. Make sure the box collider is checked. Is trigger is checked. And then also add a rigid body and make sure it is kinematic. All right, basically what this means is this means that the player can't go through the enemy. It will actually collide with it instead, okay? So we have that. And then for your laser... Um, it's in your prefabs. Your laser here. Go ahead and add a. a uh, you don't need a. Yeah, you can add a rigid. Add a rigid body to that too. It's kin. As kin sorry, it's kinematic. All right. So once all our game objects have rigid bodies and uh, colliders, which is just a capsule collider, and is trigger is checked. Make sure it's always checked. Then we're we're ready to go. Okay. So the next step is to make it work. And just so you guys can see that we're going to be starting from scratch, you'll notice that if I even shoot it, nothing happens, right? It just goes right through me, and the bullet goes right through there. So how do we fix this? Go ahead and open up your scripts folder, and let's start with the enemy first. So go ahead and open up your enemy class here, and we're going to create a new function. So let's talk about real quick what we want to do and I apologize guys if the intro to this was a little long um, it's been a few months since I made a video so with our enemy script we're gonna introduce something called an on trigger enter and that, as you can see here the enemy the laser and the player all have a trigger command under the colliders okay so what we want to do is we want to check to see if something collided with this object. So what we need to do is we need to look up a method about colliders. So the best way to do that, guys, is let's go ahead and look up the reference manual for colliders. Um, here, sphere collider. Uh, here is trigger. It enables, if enabled, this collider is used for triggering events. So that means that this collider is used for triggering events. So maybe if something were to hit it, then we can destroy it. It would destroy itself. Uh, and is ignored by the physics engines. Um, let's see what here we have. Triggers. An alternative way of using colliders is to make them as trigger. Friction and bounces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rigid body collider. These game objects contain both a rigid body and a collider. Collision action matrix. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so we know this is what we want. So let's find out, let's look at a scripting example of it. Type in trigger, see what comes up. Collider is trigger, is the collider a trigger? Um, collider on trigger enter, on trigger enter is called when the collider other enters the trigger. Okay, so that sounds like what we want, when something else enters the trigger. Uh, let's see, on trigger enter is called when the collider other, meaning, say, the laser, enters the trigger, which is the enemy. This message is sent to the trigger collider in the rigid body. All right, cool. This sounds exactly like what we want. So let's go and look at the C-sharp example they have. So they have the void on trigger enter collider other, and then destroys the other game object. 
Okay, very cool. So here's what we want to do then. Let's go ahead and do that. So what we want to do is go into, oops, sorry guys. Go into Unity, open up your scripts, go into the enemy folder. All right, and we're going to use that method, um, void on trigger enter. Okay. All right, and the next thing we want to do is on trigger enter, and then we want to write collider in here. Collider, and then I like the, I don't like calling my other, I'm just going to call it collider. So collider, collider just allows us to call the word collider and all its functions. Collider, okay, so now what we want to do is we're in the enemy class here, guys. So basically what we want to do is if the collider, say the laser, were to hit the enemy, what do we want to happen? We want the enemy to be destroyed, right? So here's how you do that. So we have, it's right out pseudo command, okay? Um, basically we want if the laser hits, all right here, if the laser hits the enemy, destroy enemy, right? Okay, so if the laser hits the enemy, destroy enemy, simple. So we've used the destroy method before, so we know we're gonna need the destroy method. Um, destroy, and then, you remember what we did, just game object, and that destroys the enemy object. Or you can write this dot game object too, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have that. Uh, so we have destroyed this game object, and then now what do we have? We have if the laser hits the enemy. So if the laser hits the enemy, so we need an if statement in here. So go ahead and do that. If if what? If so we have if the laser hits the enemy. So we need an if statement. So we have. Let me just move this on top. Okay, so if the laser, right? So if collider, because we need to call the collider function to get its abilities. So if collider dot what? We want the laser, right? And what's the laser? It's just a prefab. What's a prefab? A prefab is a game object. So game object. Um, prefab collider dot game object dot. Let's see what our options are. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of ways to explain this next step, but basically what you have to do, guys, is you have to tell it what objects can collide with it. So if collider.game object is equal to the laser, okay, then the enemy will be destroyed. And the way that works is we have to search for it with a compare code. So we want to compare the tag, all right? And basically the tag is just a true or false if it equals this tag. So we have collider.game object compare tag, which is basically saying um, whatever's in this tag, if it hits the enemy, the enemy will destroy itself. All right, and the way and what you put in the tag, guys, is just go to the hierarchy and see what you named your projectile laser. All right, so it's spelled L A Z E R with a capital L. It's important that you spell it exactly as it is in your hierarchy. So go back to it, and you're gonna put laser. All right, so we have if the laser collides with the enemy, we're going to destroy the enemy. The enemy will destroy itself. Okay? So let's go ahead and just save that and give it a try. Alright, so you'll see that the enemy goes directly through me, but what happens if I shoot it? Oh, there you go. Alright? So when you shoot the enemy, the enemy disappears. Okay, now we want to do the player because you saw that the player basically uh, the enemy went right through the player. So how do we make it where if the enemy hits the player, the player would disappear? So let's go ahead and open up our uh, scripts here. See what we have. Go into our player script. So same way that we just did the enemy with the laser, I'm assuming it's going to be very similar to the player function, and. I'm actually not going to do this one for you. I'm going to show you in pseudocode how it's done and you guys can, you know, you guys can figure that out from there. But it's ideally going to be the same thing as this. So let me show you the layout for it. So let's see, go into your player class. And remember, all right? So first things first, guys, is you need the new method. Um, 
You need a new method for... Ooh, give me one second, guys. Sorry. Okay. Remember, you have to use the void on trigger enter method, okay? It's very important. And what we have here... Hold on. Where's the brackets for this? This is bracket two. Avoid oh, update. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. So we have uh, you're going to start with your void on trigger enter. So you need to create a function. A void is a function. So um, create function on trigger enter. And that's a built in Unity uh, runtime. So make sure you spell it exactly as I typed it out just here. Okay, and it's going to take two parameters. It's going to take one parameter. All right, it's going to take the collider. And then just give it another name. You can name it C, you can name it John, it doesn't matter. It's just how you want to call it. It's kind of like caching it like we did with my transform. So Collider, uh, I usually just call it Collider, lowercase c, it's easier. Um, so you create a function on trigger, enter, enter, Collider. Okay, and then make don't forget your brackets because all functions have to have open and ending brackets. All right, and then basically what you want to do next is you're going to say here, if and we're in the player class, so what do we want? We want if the enemy, and remember, the enemy object has to be spelled out exactly as it is, and I'm using a capital E in mind. So if the enemy collides with the game object, if the enemy collides with the game object equal to player, right? Um, if the enemy collides with the game object equal to player, and I hope that doesn't confuse anyone. Um, let me see if I can read it. If the enemy collides with here with player, if the enemy collides with player, um, player will destroy itself, or player gets destroyed. You know, player will get destroyed. Remember, we have to use a tag to find enemy, okay? We want to use if the enemy collider. So I have quotes here for the tag, and you have to compare it with other tags in the hierarchy. So make sure it's spelled exactly the same way. And wonderful. That shouldn't be there. Okay, so basically, guys, uh, this video was pretty much my first video in a few months. So I'm sorry if it was a little rough, but I'm actually going to focus on the next video where we're going to create a high score and we'll work on saving and then I think if I can find the images again I'll get into the art side of things and we'll figure out some sound explosions and we'll, um, we'll give the option of a main menu and a play again and quit screen alright thanks again for watching guys appreciate the support